guys, welcome back to the My Netball Network. Today we're going to analyse the top four teams because it's semi-finals of the Netball World Cup tomorrow. So I'm going to do a bit of an analysis on each of the four teams. I'm going to pick out three points each and that is it because I know I talk too much anyway. So I've picked out three points on each team for us to have a little look at and it might maybe help some people... Uh, some coaches look at the game a little bit differently some players it might give you something to work on as an individual with a bit of video to go with it so basically we're doing video analysis together guys on the World Cup semi-final okay let's talk South Africa now it's difficult after the game against England because I don't actually think they had their best game against England England, the England Roses were incredible that game. Joe Harson, ridiculous. Serena Guthrie, ridiculous. Jay Clark, ridiculous. Everybody was ridiculous. It was a great game and we performed out of our skins. But I don't think that South Africa put their best foot forward in that game. And I think we'll see a different team going into this semi final. So definitely do not write them off after that last performance because this is going to be great. They've never played. I haven't seen. I've seen them run Australia um, for three quarters, three good quarters, nearly every time we've seen them um, in the last couple of years. They've done a really good job against them. But we haven't yet seen what South Africa are going to do in that big match situation. This is a World Cup semi-final. We have not seen South Africa in a World Cup semi-final. So I'm expecting them to come out with so much passion pride they have got nothing to lose in this semi-final they've already been amazing everybody's been loving the work they've already made history they're going to give everything to this and you're going to see the heart and soul in this game anyway sidetracked a little bit there but the things that we can expect from south africa in the shooting circle especially from marika those in um out and ins to get close to the post and pops the shooter. Marika will set up to put the shot up. That will make the defender shift back to get their arms up or to even just move back to the goal shooter. And then she will play the in and out set up again, probably play it in again, or go to shoot, pull the defender in to jump the shot and just pop it right, up, right over to the shooter. Those in and outs and that pop are lethal because it's constantly playing with those defenders' heads. All the time the defenders are moving back to set up for something, she's changing up, she's mixing up, she's getting herself into better positions to either put up the ball or she's passing the ball into a better position for a safer shot. Marika has got to be one of the best in the game for this, I think, and Australia are going to have to be savvy about it to stop it. Using the line on that backup. So when I say using the line, I mean they could be on the circle edge and they'll pass to the backup on the line and go again. And They've been doing this a lot and I feel like they've been very safe with the ball. I think um, in previous games where they've been competing with the top teams and then they've lost in the last quarter, they've become unsafe and uneasy with the ball. And I think it's very clear to see they've really been working on the possession. And using that back up on the line is an important part to any team's possession. Their defenders are doing a really good job of being a nice available option for, uh, for those guys to pass back to on that line. And also it changes the angle of the ball. So a lot of the time you'll see them pass from a wide position to a defender who's mid, um, set up in the middle of the line. And that will just change the angle and change what is available uh, to the ball really. So it's something South Africa have been doing really well. I'm interested to see if they'll be able to maintain it with the Aussie pressure. And I feel like it's something they've been working on within their possession game to help them in those pressure moments. I think it'll be crucial to their success um, using that back up on the line, being patient with the ball and working it around until something opens up in front of them. Defensive switches. Now, I've already said in previous videos about the partnership between Pretorius and uh, Mwene, and I mean, they've been in full force, to be honest with you. I think, you know, like I said, I think the Roses did a really good job against them last night, and I do think they kind of dis disconnected that relationship quite well. But um, 
in the Jamaica game, they were on point with the relationship. There's a lot of confusion in that circle. There's a lot of uh, movement between the two of them. Uh, one of them coming to the front, challenging the back ball. One of them stepping to the back, but coming through and challenging that front ball. I've got a picture up. I've got a picture up and I'm drawing stuff on it, hopefully, uh, to try and explain what I'm talking about. So hopefully that stuff is helping and matching with what I'm saying. But I mean, it's not even just connection. You've just got two amazing players in that circle. I'm excited to see that because I actually think their defence will match up quite well to the Aussie style for two reasons, really. One, because they've been playing Suncourt together for half the year. That'll be a great help to them. They've been playing against this style. They've been playing together against that style. So they'll have a good connection about uh, those Australian patterns that we're going to see in that attacking circle. And two, because of the ground that they cover. Pummy's got a great arm span <laughs> and Carla's footwork is ridiculous so the, those two in that circle can cover a lot of ground and that's why I think they're going to be lethal in this semi-final. Okay so the Aussies. Okay so we can't talk about the Aussies without acknowledging their ball speed. It is absolutely one of their strengths. They let that ball go because they know exactly where each other are going all of the time, at speed, at pace, and that, those passes are like bullets as well, but they're so used to taking those hard catches under pressure, probably as well training and playing against each other when they go up, playing against that hard man of man style defence. They're used to running through on that catch and taking the ball under pressure, and it is absolutely one of their strengths. And it is one of their strengths because all that little niggly stuff around the circle edge, where you've got a really small space to get through, uh, to get through, <laughs> to get free, um, and to get yourself on the circle edge. That's where this comes in handy because it's almost it's almost cheeky. Like you don't expect the ball to come because you you might feel like you've got them in a good position, but that ball still comes firing through. And if your head's slightly down, or if you're looking a little bit for that attacker behind you it's going to go straight past you and they're going to, even if you notice and you go to get it, they're going to come running through and really attack that ball. So that ball speed is 100% one of the strengths and trademarks of the Aussie style and it really, it really helps them make sure they get on the edge of the circle, helps them look after it when things get a bit sticky and attack and it also helps them with their feeding into the circle. There was an absolute cracker of a pass from Kelsey Brown yesterday when it was like a bounce pass for about 20 people um, straight uh, to the baseline. I can't remember who it was to, uh, Wood or Bassett, but what to one of them drive on the baseline, probably Wood. Um, so yeah, ball speed, absolute strength for the Aussies and South Africa are really going to have to try and slow that down if they want to get on top of them in the semi-final. Second thing I'm going to talk about is those front cuts. So something that Australia is absolutely amazing at is getting that front cut, cutting across the body and getting that flat ball. And it's really difficult to mark because if you as an attacker get your body, if you're running with a defender and as an attacker you get your body around um, the front of the defender, the only thing they can try and do to get that ball is to go through you and it's going to be a contact and then you're going to get a free pass or somebody else can take the pass and you can get them caught. So it's a really effective tool to use and the Aussies are definitely the best at using it. Um, it's going to be tough to stop but I actually think it's something that South Africa use quite a lot as well so they'll be used to defending against it so um, I'm interested to see how well they deal with that and if they can cut off that front cut and force them to go over them because South Africa have a lot of players that are good in the air, that are good aerial players and the players like coming at the back who is confident at flying on the ball, they're really going to be wanting to think wanting to think about getting their attackers either behind them or just keeping them up court but stopping that front court because that is a pretty safe ball and it's difficult to stop without contacting. Last thing I'm going to be talking about is that man-on-man -man defense that forces 
the players out of the middle of the court. Now, I have talked a little bit about zone that I think the, the Diamonds have been working on, and I still believe it, I'm still sticking with it, even though they didn't do it in the semi-final. So, I think that is more to do with, because it's more in a defensive third, and it's more to do with them doing a good man-on-man -man job with a player, keeping them out, forcing them out, keeping them out of that middle, running them to sidelines. They always challenge it if it's going to sidelines. It's one of their, the things that they're really good at. Jamie Lee Price has been doing it very well at all tournament. Weston also be doing it very well at all tournament. Um, but once they've been doing that for long enough, it tends to make attackers stop trying to penetrate through the middle of the court. And once you do that, that's when I think they sit in that box position. So the force mode, force mode, that's when they sit in that box position. They stop trying to attack in the middle of the court, the opposition, and then they go for that long cross-court one, which the back players, Bruce, as we know, it's her bread and butter, will fly out on. So that's when I think they set up a zone or a box after doing a good man-on-man -man job and then they start sitting in that position and I think we can expect that in the semi-final I think we can expect that in close moments of the game okay their sheer range in defense is ridiculous so when you look at that New Zealand lineup you've probably got three shorter players Langman, Saunders and Crampton probably just just those three everybody else is the same size as those goal shooters <laughs> they're all really tall the goal attacks are tall the wing defenses are tall so that team has got some serious range when it comes to defense which is why that zonal play is part of their trademark which is why they're so successful at it because the ground that they can cover by just doing this with their arm is ridiculous for one but they can cover so much ground because they are tall players it's as, simple, it's as simple as that obviously they're very skillful players no matter who they have on they are getting more tips than any defenders I see on the feed so they'll often leave their shooter and actually just jump up and challenge the feeder as they release it and they're getting tips on it they're getting turnovers on it um, Raw come on last night and last night, yesterday morning, and the first thing she did was get a tip on that feed. Um, so their sheer range is a danger for any attacking circle, any attacking circle, and it's definitely going to have to be something that England are aware of. But don't play into too much because that one tip or that one um, intercept that they get can put the doubt in the feeders minds and if you start doubting yourself they're only going to get more you need to be confident with what you're doing but you need to tidy up on your skills to make sure it gets rained cleanly so that's something that England are definitely going to have to be looking at and it is definitely a super strength of those Kiwis their sheer range in that not only the defensive end but across the whole court Okay, last and final thing is that back defender. So, uh, we all know that the Kiwis do a zone and are constantly setting up that back defender to come through and get the intercept. And they are so good at it, it is ridiculous. So, there's a lot of hard work going out in front from the mid court, um, even from the shooters um, as it's coming through court. They'll make sure they shut down anything little, anything small. As um, a unit, they'll really want to protect that middle space so if something looks like it opens up on the far side and the defender will just, from the back, will run through and take that ball. And it's fine that they do that, but if the feeder or whoever's got the ball sights it. So as long as you can see what they're trying to set up, because sometimes they don't get it, sometimes they don't always get it right. I'll, well, obviously times they don't get it right, so sometimes it can go, but it's just really important that the feeders are sighting that back defender, right, is this a setup or have we got three here? And they're making that decision literally in half a second, otherwise it's too late. So that uh, sighting that back defender, that back defender coming through is so important for these Kiwis. It's so important um, to make their defensive style work, otherwise it's a whole lot of work at the front 
for no reward at the back. That is 100% one of New Zealand's biggest strengths, that back defender coming through for the intercept. Okay, so New Zealand, that shooting circle. I've been really looking at it a lot and been trying to figure it out and I actually think that out of all the teams, New Zealand 100% have the most different style to anybody else. Um, and it's that shooting circle in particular, I find, and it might just be because I'm not a shooter, quite hard to read. Uh, after looking at it quite a bit and trying to figure out uh, a bit more about it, I think there's one thing that's really really coming out uh i'm saying clear to see but like i said i don't i'm not entirely sure on this one but i feel like those shooters and the feeders only feel well not only but mainly feel comfortable delivering the ball to the shooters that are holding a front space so it might it still might be lifted but they don't do like a normal tee up against the defender hold for the ball and hold that back space They'd rather have the defender fully on the back, no matter where it is to the ball, play the ball around and then move on to it. So it's, there's a lot of screening going on, there's a lot of setting up so that it can go flat into that shooter rather than up. When they do use the back space, it's almost like um, it's more, rather than on a hold, it's on a bit of movement. So it's when the back space opens up because some, something's drawn those defenders in, the back space opens up and one of the shooters runs onto the ball. But what I'm seeing from all of them is hitting that defender, turning and providing something that's front space, which is very set, which is a very safe way to play the game because you know, like I said, with, uh, same with the Aussies with the front cuts, it's difficult to come through that without contacting. Um, but it is different, and I think it's something that we should have a look at because. I'm interested in it. Even, even well, one of the screenshots I've got there is of Mez trying to screen off so that she can get the front ball on a swing. Um, it doesn't play out, and then she ends up tucking behind the back. But it's in the setups that they're constantly trying to get that defender flat on the back to try and play something on the front rather than teeing up and going over, which is something that Bailey Mez used to, Bailey Mez used to tee up and go over quite a bit, but it, she still does do it, but it's changed a little bit and it's something to keep your eye out on. I wanna know, you know, if you've got any thoughts on it, please do comment and let me know what you think, but it's something that I'm looking at, I'm interested in it, they're playing a little bit different, they're not going over as much, they're trying to play for that front ball. Um, a lot more and constantly getting those defenders on the back to try and create something that's going straight in rather than looping. And at England Roses. So, even though I'm pretty confident that Tracy, Lisa, Nolene and Norma will not be watching these videos for their video analysis, I feel a bit weird trying to analyse England because I feel like what if I accidentally say something that helps the opposition? Not going to happen, but it's just in my mind. So, England. <sighs> what they are doing well at the minute is um, accessing that middle as attackers. So there's so many nice plays where you've either got the back defender, so one defence and goal defence, driving through the middle of the court um, from the back. And if that's not happening, we're actually getting an attacker who's driven down, pull right through the middle again. So we're accessing that middle space really nicely at the minute, whether it's from the attackers or from the defenders. Getting in that middle space means that you have options in attack. You have more options to see. You, you've got more passes that you can give safely. Um, obviously, if you're catching it on the edge of the court all the time, you can kind of pass it towards the middle of the court, but passing it over to the other side of the court can be risky, can be dangerous, especially against that PV style um, that we were talking about and that back defender coming through. So the fact that we're accessing the middle of the court um, makes me feel good and it's in, it will be important because either England will do that really well or New Zealand will stop that because it's two strengths coming up against each other. New Zealand are great at protecting that middle, 
England are great at attacking that middle. So I'm excited to see how that plays out, but I'm confident that we will do well with it. Our second thing that we're going to talk about is England denying the middle space. Now it's quite interesting to see because I think they play a bit of a mixture of a man on man and the zone. Uh, sometimes we're quite tight in our defenders and we have uh, maybe a uh, uh, goal attack and wing attack loose off their players, kind of covering anything that's coming through the middle from the back. Same with our centre and wing defence, so they might be tight man on man, but if a shooter's coming through the middle, they might release those players to cover that middle. I definitely know I've got a picture of this one, so that will be coming up now. So they'll release those players to shut off that middle one and encourage that wide one where our defenders will back them up. So it's something that we're doing really well. I feel like we're very connected as units at the minute. Um, which is good to see um, and we really have been shutting off that middle and forcing the, forcing the ball to land wide quite a bit um, and that will increase our chance to get a turnover or for them to make an error so happy with that and the last thing I'm going to talk about is the pace that England have got on the ball at the minute it's really really nice to see and refreshing to see actually and for all coaches all young players that have heard or said you know we need to play at our own pace we don't need to try and keep up with their pace or slow it down that is always coming from the sideline England are great are a great example of, of doing that at the minute so um, I think what's been really impressive is at times when it's needed it they've been punching the ball through the movements being fast the, the ball speed's been fast and we've moved through to goal quite quickly. At times where we've needed to settle it and just make sure the movement has still been intense and still been drawing defenders, but there's just a bit more touch on the ball, there's a bit more touch and a bit more... Oh, a Leon or the Oats word, finesse on the pass. Um, even in the fast plays, if you look at the ball, it, say when you watch Australia, Watch the ball, just watch the ball, don't watch the pass of the movement or anything. The ball will move pretty flat like that. Okay, that's when you know it's a real bullet pass and it's punchy. When you're watching England, it is not that the ball is not powerful, the pass is not powerful, but it just has a little touch on it. And it just means that when an attacker is running at 100 miles an hour down court, they've got a ball that's placed in the right space, so it's good understanding from that point, but it, it doesn't, it just, takes the sting out of the pass and it takes the sting out of the catch and the landing and it just helps that player stay under control. So having that touch, placing it in the right space and having being comfortable in your own speed of play is something that I think England have been doing very well this tournament. They did very well against South Africa and it just made me feel as a spectator that they were very in control of the situation and I think it is definitely a super strength of England at the minute.